Regan slots Brianna Tinsley into the starting lineup tonight. Coach O'Regan has done some great things since taking over for Kenny Brooks, who of course moved on to the ACC and Virginia Tech, but he has built quite the successful program since Coach Brooks departed, and you see the record, which sort of speaks for itself and what he's done over in Harrisonburg. On the other side, Tina Thompson now in her third season at the helm for UVA, and I mean, there is not a more decorated coach in terms of her playing career than what Virginia has in Tina Thompson. Yes, for sure. Playing and style. I mean, look at that outfit right there. <laughs> we were watching some of her her jewels uh, dazzle in the, in the light. But yeah, I'm excited to see these two games, DC teams, uh, face in this game tonight. Like you said, Brianna Tinsley will be returning to JPJ. So it'll be a good one. Well, we talked about Tinsley in the starting lineup. How about Virginia and how they will line up for tonight's game as we are underway from John Paul Jones Arena. Emily Maupin, another Charlottesville native. Transfer from Elon. She makes her first career start for the Hoos this evening. Also, Aaliyah Pitts, new face in that starting lineup for Virginia. How about McDaniel? Now, that is huge for James Madison, a player coming out of high school, known for her three-point shooting ability, but she had been a combined 0 of 14 through their first two games. That has got to feel good. For sure. And play, especially going up against a zone. We saw UVA start out in a zone, so it'll be interesting to see how they use her to stretch that zone a little bit. Giveaway here, and right on cue, Tinsley leading the break. Here's Kiki Jefferson. She is the centerpiece of what the Dukes will try and do. ACC transfer on Juth, but she can't get it to go from the right side. Here's Aaliyah Pitts ahead of the pack. Whistle and a blocking foul will be charged to Tinsley. Look at the starting five for Coach O'Regan. We've already introduced you to the Charlottesville native Brianna Tinsley, but the rest of the way, and yeah, Kiki Jefferson can do a little bit of everything for James. Yeah, she can. I mean, she, she's very athletic. She can get to the basket. She can dump it off. We saw her throwing it into the post there to Juve on the block, and that's going to be an option for, for JMU moving forward. You know, they have that height on them, and they have a lot of athleticism, and so seeing if they can get some baskets from their post players will be, be very important, especially early on. One of two from the foul line for the first year, Aaliyah Pitts from Suitland, Maryland. Now McDaniel, who got JMU on the scoreboard. There's just got to be something about that feeling of knowing you've gone over the first two games when you are a shooter to get that one under your belt and have it be the first shot of the game. It's tough. It's, it's definitely tough. You have to have that confidence and you have to know that, you know, not this one, the next one. Not this one, the next one. I can only imagine that she was doing that in the previous two games. And hey, I mean, she didn't hesitate. Pulled the trigger right from the jump. A little fade away from Miller wouldn't go. Jefferson has the rebound. She will run in transition, finds the open. Tinsley for three, left it short. Juf the rebound. Second effort wouldn't go, but she was hit on the elbow. And there will be free throws coming. They got Moppin on the foul. Georgia Tech transfer on Juf from Senegal. First one from Juf is good. From the capital city of Senegal and Dakar to Florida, where she played high school ball at Liberty Christian Prep. Then a year of post-grad ball at IMG Academy. Well-traveled young lady, rounding out her career at JMU. Not been able to keep it alive, and now Pitts. That wouldn't go. Virginia so big to get that first point on the board. Talk about a battle that it was. Offensive foul here going to go against Rain Tucker. Yeah, Rain Tucker took it right at Meg Jefferson's chest, and she put her hands up and was able to sell it. Here, Virginia coming down back on offense. Take a look here right into the chest. Try to hit a fadeaway, but just had a little bit too, con too much contact. Miller off the curl. That's a pretty looking shot. Virginia back within one. I like that option for Miller. We talked about Meg Jefferson early and was hoping that either Twa or Miller would step up and really help her out in the scoring position. 
Tinsley on the drive and tried to dump it off. Good job by Miller collapsing there. It looked like that passing lane closed up on Tinsley and Hurd. Meanwhile, for Virginia's offense, it took nine minutes to get that first bucket. Last time out against ECU, so right in the thick of it. Just to get on the board had to feel good and had to be a breath of fresh air for Tina Thompson and company. Rihanna Tinsley on the move, wouldn't go. Looking for her shot early. Extra pass there to McDaniel, open for three, but misfired. Strong putback effort from Tucker wouldn't go. Boy, how many looks Jeez. are the Dukes going to get at it? Fifth shot attempt, and it finally goes down. And it's Doof cleaning it up. Four people put their hands on that ball, trying to put back that rebound. So JMU doubling up Virginia very early on. Twa on the drive, lost the handle. Now Miller into the paint. Good looking finish for the second year, Carol Miller. Nice little floater right inside the paint. Just reading the defense, playing simple basketball right now, Carol Miller is. Nice look underneath, but I tell you, it's been a lot of quality looks, but the Dukes have struggled to finish right around the basket early in this game. We hit four minutes gone by in the opening quarter. Jefferson from the elbow. Boy, she has just been great for Virginia. And I think the fact that it's been kind of an unexpected source of offense has been what has made her performance so special. Yeah, and I mean, we don't know what she's practicing and, and you know, doing in practice, I guess I should say. But really, she seems very confident in that ACC free throw line area. That's a nice dump off from Tinsley, but again, Tucker just couldn't get it to go. Juf, yet another offensive rebound. Jefferson, too strong from three. Moppin tracks down the rebound. How about that? Seven offensive rebounds. Told by the magical production voice in my ear. Already for JMU. I mean, they have just been cleaning up on the glass, but really, I mean, I'm sure Coach O'Regan is frustrated because so many shots right around the hoop, and JMU just can't finish. Yeah, they're 2 from 13 from the field right now, so that, that's frustrating. Um, but they have the energy, and they have the players that can that they can put the ball in the hoop. They just have to take their time and really focus. Virginia on that jumper from Jefferson, leading by a point. Tensley all the way to the rim. Boy, I've lost track of the missed layups by JMU in these opening five minutes. Pitts. Nice finish from the first year, Aaliyah Pitts. Great little give and go. She didn't have the numbers coming down in transition. Gave it to Twa and got it right back on the sideline or baseline layup. Long overdue for that media timeout. Some tired legs out there, you've got to imagine, now for both sides. Starting fives have been in the entire game. I think you can see it there yeah. with Juve trying to get to the rim. And now both sides a little bit slow getting up and down the court. But we're talking about six minutes, which is much longer than players are used to without that extended timeout. And now Coach Thompson's just going to take a timeout. And it is Virginia with a three-point lead. And that unheralded second year, Meg Jefferson putting them in front, knocking down the jumper, who's by three. season from a year ago. However, they lost a whole lot of the talent that got them to that conference title. Four of their five starters moving on after last season. And so JMU, I don't know if you want to call it a rebuilding year, but they definitely have to retool some places because they had a lot of reliable faces for a good stretch that got the job done in Harrisonburg. They did. I mean, you look at all of those awards, whether it's CAA Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, they had a stacked squad returning one starter from last season, and that's Kiki Jefferson. Deja Bristol travels with the basketball. Her first touch of the game. Dylan Horton and Deja Bristol have checked in for Virginia. JMU counters with Anna Goodman off the bench alongside the uber-talented freshman Jamia Hazel, who has been their leading scorer through their first couple of games. Also onto the floor, Steph Oderkirk 
That was a long stretch to have the starters on the floor, so not surprised to see a lot of substitutions on both sides. Get some fresh legs out there coming out of the timeout. Here is Hazel, open for three, left it short. Bristol the rebound. Hazel is not afraid to score the basketball, as we've already talked about it. She earned Rookie of the Week back at the end of November. Nice turnaround jumper from Miller. And again, for as many wide open layup looks as the Dukes have had early in this game. It is Virginia now building a five-point lead. Oderkirk from the elbow. That's a good looking shot. Local product from Spotswood High School. From the elbow, Jefferson. Nothing there. Now Twab. 12 to shoot for Virginia. A whistle on a foul. And did they get Goodman, I believe, for KMU, another one of their freshman class. And it is on Goodman. Seeing a lot of movement from this Virginia offense. They're used to a motion offense, and so we're seeing a few quick hitters as we've seen uh, Carol Miller come off of a few screens and her taking it to the basket here. That's a strong take for Miller. Tell you what, this is as strong as we've seen Miller so far this season. Really dictating things for herself yeah. right from the get-go instead of hoping for it to come to her. She's very capable. I mean, she's on a team with a lot of scores. I mean, the, a lot of the, the guards on this Virginia team are able to create for themselves. And so when she can really have that confidence and really take it the way she did, that'll be helpful. Jefferson missing from the ACC logo. Ball lost out of bounds. It'll go back to JMU. You, you know, we talked about Jefferson and what she has meant to Virginia, but really it's been kind of in the absence of Miller and Twa, the yeah. players we expected to lead the offensive charge for Virginia early in the season. Yeah, they're such aggressive drivers that, you know, we kind of expected them to, you know, get, get, get some points on the board by just getting into that lane. And so they weren't really able to do that in the first two games as UCF and ECU both really like to play in a zone. You see JMU matching up here. Tinsley to handle the inbound. Zell ran right into Bristol, and now Miller on the attack. Foul going against JMU. Well, tomorrow we'll have two more men's college basketball games for you right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Louisville hosts UNC Greensboro at the KFC Young Center at 2 o'clock Eastern, and Kent State is in Charlottesville to take on number 15, Virginia. That's at 6 p.m. Five second count. Virginia taking too long to get the ball in bounds. It'll go back to the Dukes. Only their third turnover, fourth turnover, excuse me, so far in this game. UVA taking care of the ball so so well early on. Odor Kirk in the paint. Hazel. Nice dump to the cutting Jefferson, and she's able to finish. Able to knock it in. She's a sneaky, sneaky player. Jefferson is able to get in behind defenders. Slashing to the basket. Last year's CAA Rookie of the Year. Preseason first team all-conference selection. Horton, and she traveled. You know, not to hammer the point too much, but the first few minutes of this game, it really did feel like JMU was getting point blank shots mm -hmm. almost at will. Yeah. Virginia has settled in, I think, at this point now, and it's more balanced in terms of which team getting the more favorable looks on the offensive end. And I guess fitting that they'll now exchange traveling violations. And now kind of seems to be settling into more balanced battle between the two teams as this first quarter winds to a close. But I think the point remains for JMU. You, you don't change too much from what you've done because they have been getting quality looks by and large. 
For sure. I don't see them going away from anything that they've done so far. I think it's really just like you said, finishing at the basket at the end of the day. Sometimes it just comes down to just focusing a little bit more. Twa on the step back. That's too strong. And foul underneath. Now, if you're JMU, one thing you definitely feel great about is the fact that Virginia is shooting nowhere near as well as Buffalo did against them in the first <laughs> half last time out. JMU falling in their last game 80 to 64 against the Buffalo Bulls team that scored 57 points in the first half. Yeah. They they had a very very hot start. Uh, Buffalo outscored JMU in the first two quarter by 10 point plus each. It was wild. I mean, they couldn't miss. And more often than not, it was from behind the three-point line. Yeah. Jefferson's they scored nine jumper threes. off the mark, but there's McDaniel right at the buzzer, putting it back up and in. Freshman Peyton McDaniel makes it count to pull JMU within one point. Hotly contested, O'Carroll Miller pacing the team with eight of her own, getting it done a little bit of everywhere on the offensive end of the floor. She is. She's really looking for her shot. I think in the first two games, she was kind of, you know, dishing it off to people, and, and she was shooting the ball. She just was not able to score um, as she is tonight, and she's kind of looking like she, like her freshman year. I don't know if she was challenged or simply challenged herself, but, yeah. I mean, she has come out to start this game wanting to impose her own will on the pace today, and it's working out for her. Although not there. She gives it right into the hands of Hazel, who will coast in and finish to put JMU back in front. Those are the mindless turnovers that her and, and some of the guards at Virginia, for Virginia have to cut out of their games. I think it not only does their team a disservice, but it also takes them out of their game a little bit as well. Caden Lawson into the mix. Got in right at the end of the first quarter for Virginia. Filling that backup point guard role. Jefferson on the turnaround. Boy, she and Lawson collide. Jefferson comes away with it. Virginia will reset with Twa. Boy, Virginia still a little bit shorthanded in terms of available bodies. Last thing you want to see is Jefferson colliding with Lawson there. Twa, long strides around the paint. Can't finish with the left hand. Turnover for JMU there, just throws it right out of bounds, back to Virginia ball. Virginia really needs a shot right now. I think that they've been really running down that clock, looking for their options, but the quick hitters seem to be working in that first quarter for them. Yeah, I mean, they, seemingly whatever they want, they've been able to get yeah. jumpers from the elbows. Miller from inside the elbow, nice little 10-footer. So good at pulling up at mid-range. A lot of times she tries to take it all the way to the basket and sometimes turns out to get a charge call. But there, the perfect time for a pull-up. Open McDaniel from the corner. Thought perhaps she found her spot. Rims in and out. Can you buy a point with the ball? Lawson. Going all the way to the rim. Couldn't finish. Tucker has the rebound for the Dukes. Boy, Hazel just wants to go and transition, and, and that is often the result. I mean, she can do so many good things around the rim, but yeah. sometimes a little overzealous in trying to get there. Great call there, and a great move to just take a charge, stand in front of her. They know that she likes to get to the basket, and she's capable of making those layups. But there, Bristol got her body between her and was able to take that charge. Talked about the move. Just looking at the players on the floor for JMU. And, you know, we talked about the move to get Brianna Tinsley into the starting lineup, but she's played every minute for the Duke so far, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they've really been using her at that point position. She has the experience. They're hoping they can get her to, to get a little bit out of these other players out here. We see Hazel, and we've seen her been able to get to the basket, but just creating some more scoring options for them. Other side of the things, Carol Miller goes to the bench for Virginia. How big she has been for the Hoos in this opening 12 plus minutes. I'll tell you, Tinsley has created a lot of 
really good looks yeah. for JMU. Doesn't necessarily have the assist to show for it. Guilty of a travel there. Get it back to Virginia. I think this is an interesting look with Caden bringing up the ball. Caden Lawson there. It was pretty aggressive in their last showing against ECU on the wing. Wow, trying to split two defenders. So draw the block and have a couple of free throws. Yeah, we talked about it in our broadcast of Virginia's game against ECU over the weekend. Lawson's link at that point guard spot. It's a bit of a unique look, and you know, I think she's still gonna make some of those first year player type of turnovers and we, we've seen that through Virginia's first couple of games but you know I think she also presents so many positives for Virginia that it's a look they're going to continue to go to well next Thursday we'll have another women's basketball doubleheader for you on ACC Network Wake Forest hosts North Carolina at 6 Eastern then number 22 Syracuse travels to Coral Gables to take on Miami at 8 new into the game for JMU and Oderkirk. Good ball rotation for JMU. Finds an open McDaniel from the wing. Ooh, back to back threes from her that have rimmed in and out no good. Lawson just takes it all the way to the rim. Now Tinsley wants to push. Offensive foul. That's on Brianna Tinsley. Couldn't stop her momentum. Barreled over Twa. Who's get it back? Yeah, former teammates there, former incoming freshmen together. She got her body there, yeah. And I mean, anything could make Amadine Twa <laughs> fall down, but uh, yeah, no, that's a good charge there. Some shot fake now goes underneath for Twa. Now posted up her former teammate. Puts it in with the left hand. And that's a good look for them. I mean, we saw Caden, we were just talking about it. Caden Lawson at that point guard position. If they can get a smaller guard on her or Amandine, both lanky players, that could be a good look. Tensley wants an answer, touches nothing but net. Tensley getting her first baskets of the game right behind that three point line, somewhere that she's very comfortable, especially in JPJ. That was a good foot behind the men's three-point line, too. So that's a pretty deep three from Tinsley. We know she's got range, and Twa has an answer. Will we get a three-point show-off between the two former teammates? I'm here for it. Great shot and great look at the basket for Twa. I mean, you get the charge on one end, then that post-up play on the other, and now it's changing threes. Are yeah, this, is, this could get fun. Here's Tinsley, a little heat check. Well, you know, we talked about it too much, but Oderkirk is there to finish it for JMU. That was on us for jinxing it. Otherwise, it definitely is going to happen. Exactly. So back to a three-point game now as we go inside of five minutes to go in this first half. Jefferson going to work from that left block. Nice move from Meg Jefferson. We are definitely looking to get her the ball more on the block ever since that last game against ECU scoring 60 points. And she looks good. She looks very confident with her back to the basket. Nice little slip screen looked like from Juke to get to the rim and a touch pass from Jefferson. Again, barreling into the paint. And it'll be an offensive foul to give possession back to the Dukes when we return. But Lauren, two shooters heating up. They are indeed. Brianna Tinsley comes down and Amadine Twa says, I got some. Woo. Fourth affair between these two teams so far. It's
It's also been a game of, frankly, missed layups from JMU so far. Errol Miller, meanwhile, has come to play for Virginia. Big, bright spot for the Hoos. Yeah, we talked about a JMU ball here to start coming out of this timeout. But yeah, a lot of missed layups from this JMU team. I think we've counted nine during this break. They're getting the shots that they want. They're just not able to finish at the basket. Which, two ways to look at it. One being, that tide's got to turn. I mean, this team's too good to continue to miss that many layups. The other is, who knows if Virginia's defense tightens up. They don't get that many. Doesn't matter if you're going to knock down threes like Steph Oderkirk does here. Stretching out her game. We've seen her put back a few shots right in that lane, but able to hit that three from long. Yeah, talented freshman they got from right in their own backyard. Her high school, eight miles from JMU's campus. And she's played well in the early goings of the season. Minutes increasing game by game. And if she keeps shooting like this, got five early points, she's just going to see more minutes. back on the floor for Virginia playing with two fouls by the way Daniel wants another three off the mark boy she has the green light though doesn't she <laughs> yeah. I mean when you think about it all the JMU players really I mean I think their coaching staff really instills that confidence in them that hey if you have the ball and you're in your sweet spot go for it Hazel, a little floater in the paint. And that's what she's best at, creating for herself, taking it one way, going another, and getting to the basket right before a defender is able to block a shot. Yeah, she's really that one freshman not known for the outside shooting, mm -hmm. but man, she gets to the rim, snap of your fingers, and she's already attacking. I mean, it's got to be tough for a defender, that quick first step she's got. Speaking of which, Lawson's first step, not too bad in her own right. And a nice battle by JMU and Juf on the floor there. Timeout taken by Coach O'Regan. We'll keep possession for the Dukes. Two point game when we come back. Right back to action here inside John Paul Jones Arena. Good hustle play from JMU. Keeps possession for the Dukes. Hazel a little strong, got her own rebound, but a whistle and a foul call. I believe they got Hazel a little over aggressive in her efforts to retrieve that loose ball. Going after her own rebound, she's so aggressive. Interested to see what Virginia will do this time coming down on offense as they've been getting some quick hitters. Miller back on the floor for Virginia. She's been playing so well in this first half for the Hoos. Jefferson, side of the glass, wouldn't go. Kept alive by Oderkirk. Daniel in transition. Juf driving baseline. Fall away, wouldn't go. Offensive rebound for Jefferson and a stick back. Just a nifty play. Kiki Jefferson. You know, you want to call her a veteran, but she's just a sophomore. I know. Had such a good, a great freshman year. Preseason all CAA first team. Nine time rookie of the week. I mean, she really stepped up, especially, you know, they had so many great players, great veterans on this team that she kind of just followed their lead. Nice touch shot from Jefferson. As quickly as she received the pass, she'd gotten rid of it, put it up and in. Virginia back within two. One minute remaining now in this opening half. It's been a fun one so far. Teams separated by only a little over an hour from one another. Daniel trying to force it high post. And now with six to shoot, Hazel steps into a three and knocks it down. She might have heard you talking about her outside game, Channing. I don't know. You know, everything we've said so far, <laughs> the players have done the exact opposite. 
don't know why I said we. I shouldn't have lumped you into that. It's really, it's been me. And a whistle and an offensive foul. There's a reason Miller was so wide open. Space cleared out on that charge. So the Dukes can hold for one last shot now. And a five-point lead, got to believe they will do so. As Pitts returns and Twa goes to the bench. Lauren, that was her third foul. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, we talked about how aggressive that she and, and Miller can be and, and really deciding on when to take it all the way to the basket and when to take, take a pull-up. And when you know that you come in on that third foul, you might want to pull up for, for mid-range. With six seconds, Hazel wants another three, and she's got back-to-back -back threes as the opening half comes to a close. Half-court heave from Miller caught the rim. What a flurry at the end from the freshman for Jamia Hazel. They're on rebounds. Well, we mentioned 10 points from Jamia Hazel, accounting for 10 of those 17 bench points. I think a nice seven also contributed by Steph Oderkirk. Can't overlook what she was able to do off the bench for JMU in that first half. Back underway here in quarter number three. And a whistle and an early foul is going to go against Virginia. Strong rebound there by Juve. Held it strong, and a few white jerseys came in there trying to pluck the ball out. Ended up with a foul. Fifth rebound of the game for Juve. For the Tech transfer. And well down low for the Dukes. Here's Jefferson. No, Jefferson never really got in any sort of significant rhythm in that first half. So, you know, look out. I mean, if Hazel is able to carry anything over from that first half, and Jefferson starts rolling as well. But, I mean, if you think about it, Jefferson really likes to get into, into the paint. She's able to shoot the three for sure. But I think UVA playing that zone against them really hurt her game a little bit. A little fade away from Rain Tucker. She's been relatively quiet, 16 points in the opener, 11 points the last time out. But Tucker now 0 of 5 from the floor so far in this game. Poppins swings it around for Miller. Now the curling twa. Jumper from the elbow, no good. Jefferson collects the rebound. Nice feed to cutting McDaniel. Up and in for an easy two. Double digit lead for James Madison, their largest of the game. That is a look that I was surprised we didn't see in the first half, Manning. JMU is known for running in transition, uh, whether that's off of the rebound or off of a steal. They like to get easy looks at the basket. Um, so that's something that we could possibly see a little bit more in the second half. Here is Miller. And a whistle on an offensive foul. And now it looks like the two officials had Differing calls. Official behind the three-point line said block. Baseline official said charge. But credit to them getting together and seeing who had the better angle. And eventually free throws for Virginia. Another good look there for Carol Miller, ending her up at the free throw line. Hoping that she can end out a few points for this Virginia squad to close out this lead that Jamie has. Ten point, ten point lead. Passes the net for Carol Miller there. 11 points now for the second year player. You know, it was kind of an awkward collision down low. I'm, I'm almost not surprised that the officials weren't exactly sure how to call it immediately. One of two from the foul line. Perhaps that's in some way indicative of not exactly sure which way it should have gone. Tensley to the rim. Nice little scoop shot. You know, they say ball don't lie with free throws, so maybe it was that ball wasn't exactly sure. <laughs> Not as catchy of a basketball phrase. He I tried. Mean, he yeah. tried. A forever. <laughs> First year Pitts, who got the start for Virginia today, feeds off for Bristol. Wow, looking underneath. Jefferson playing well once again for Virginia. She's got eight. Efficient, too, Lauren. She's four of six from the floor. Very efficient. I mean, last game she was efficient as well against ECU, but I'm going to call that her move. Right over that left shoulder, right hand shot. It, it's not a hook, but it's her shot, and she's very comfortable with making it. 
Speaking of comfortable, there's Juve underneath. Starting to come into her own. I mean, battled some injuries at Georgia Tech, in and out of the lineup a lot during her time down at Atlanta. But much more regular playing time and in this grad transfer year. She's going to see consistent starts, consistent minutes. Well, tomorrow we'll have two more men's college basketball games for you right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Louisville hosts UNC Greensboro at the KFC Yum Center at 2 o'clock Eastern. Kent State is in Charlottesville to take on number 15, Virginia. That's at 6 o'clock. Men's basketball doubleheader tomorrow. Meantime, Oderkirk from three, picking up right where she left off in that first half. First, second three on the night, getting comfortable behind that outside line. Well, JMU building up their lead now, sitting at 14 points. The Dukes trying to pull away. We'll be back in just a moment. Starting to pull away a little bit here in Charlottesville, and you see what the Dukes have done in this game quarter by quarter after sort of a slow start. And if you go back to the end of that first half, Lauren, there's a quick bath that amounts to a 24 to 5 run that JMU has been on, and they are really taking hold of this game. Virginia needs an answer here, it would seem. Yeah, they're get, definitely getting a lot more comfortable. We saw Juke get comfortable on that on the block, and, and we saw Hazel come out and hit a few threes at the end of the first half. So they're definitely feeling their groove a little bit here. It'll be interesting to see how UVA will, will stop them in their tracks. I think their depth has kind of been on display in this game tonight. Twa missed everything. And knocked it around by Jefferson, reaching over Oderkirk. The other thing for JMU, Lauren, is this is an important bounce back game. I mean, for a JMU team poised to do big things in the CAA, by all accounts. I mean, they got wild by Buffalo. Buffalo could not miss a shot there last time out. And, and, you know, you can only imagine being a player in that game with a little bit of a deer in the headlights when the team puts up 57 in the first half. Right now, it's JMU's offense that seemingly can't slow down, specifically Jamia Hazel, who's got her third three of the game. Wah from long range. She's got the answer, and that's a much-needed bucket for Virginia. And it's Amadine Twa, the redshirt junior, who knocks it down. Tinsley, one of two preseason All-CAA selections. Pulls up, knocks it down. It's a really good fake there by Brianna Tinsley. Act like she was actually going to hand the ball off to, I believe, Steph Oderkirk. And then end up throwing a nice little pull-up. You see seven points. Somewhat quiet night. I mean, I think, again, there's a nice take by Carol Miller. Sprinkled throughout this game, she's had a number of those. But there's JMU in transition, and Lauren, like you said, that is their MO. That is. They always get someone leaking out just far enough for them to get a layup on the other end. And Virginia, I think they stuck around a little bit too much, too long on that layup for Miller. Miller from the corner now. Lawson wants a three. Another one. He's knocked down two in a row from long distance. They try to creep back into this game. Lawson's first points on the night as well. Great dump across the paint. What a pass from Tinsley to find the wide open Goodman for her first points. And for any UVA fans, you might have remembered some of that, some of that play that Tinsley's showing here tonight. Able to just dump it off, able to see between defenders. Really good passing. That one had a little flourish to it as well. It was a nice. Nifty move from Tinsley. Lawson bucket on the other end. The two teams exchanging baskets right now. A little hesitation crossover, and there it is again. This time, count it, plus the foul from Goodman. Boy, all she's got to do is post up on that left block. Tinsley's finding her. Well, this will take us to a timeout on the floor. 
Goodman's going to have a chance to complete the end one when we come back off a beautiful feed from the UBA transfer, Brianna Tensley. It's about it at the top of tonight's game, but it's a homecoming in a couple of ways for Brianna Tinsley, and she's making her mark. A couple of outstanding feeds across the paint for the UBA transfer, Brianna Tinsley. She's loving it, her return to John Paul Jones Arena. Yeah, she's showing how shifty of a player she is. She has five assists on the night, as we just saw a few of her best dump offs to a post player right on that left block. I mean, if they stay there all night, Channing, they, they can rack up some points themselves. And now a chance to complete that three point play off that left block. Anna Goodman cannot do so. Freshman from Newport News. We go inside of four minutes in this third quarter. Wow, trying to find a way to get it to Jefferson. Nothing there. Dylan Portman has returned for Virginia. Stops, pulls up, and connects. Nice looking shot there by Horton coming in on, into this game. Reads the defense and pulls up right before she can make any contact. Her first points of the ball game. Limited minutes for Horton. Has only played four minutes in this game tonight. Also only saw ten minutes last time out. Lawson on the drive, but cut off by McDaniel. Now around the screen from Bristol, Lawson wants three. On rebound, tracked down by Twa. Who's going to have another look at it? Cut into this deficit, Virginia here at home. Deep three from Twa left short. Settling for some outside shots. I see they're trying to get it into that post, but JMU doing a great job. Brianna Tinsley off the left side this time. Boy, soft touch on that finish. Ramping it up a little bit. You know, she got the start tonight and wondering if Perhaps she's auditioning now to keep that starter spot. Nine points. How about five assists as well? For the product of St. Anne's Belfield, private school right around the corner from here at UVA. Jefferson aims it up. Strong rebound in between two purple jerseys, but able to gather herself and finish strong. Now Tinsley will slow it down. Swings it out to Hazel. Posting it in the paint, but a whistle and a foul to give it back to Virginia. Well, next Thursday, we'll have another ACC women's basketball doubleheader for you on ACC Network. Wake Forest hosts North Carolina at 6 Eastern. Then, number 22, Syracuse travels to Coral Gables. Take on Miami as at 8 p.m. It is amazing to think. It feels that the season just got underway. Just and we're talking about, that. that's ACC play. ACC play. And, you know, Virginia's ACC opener is Lawson. Nice adjustment in the air to finish there. Virginia's ACC opener hosting Clemson here next Thursday. That's a 3 o'clock start. Traveling violation. Give it back to the Hoos. We get a look at what's on the docket for Virginia. One last out of conference game in the ESPN family of networks. And it's it's the rare weekday afternoon game. Now, yeah. I, I love it. I'm not complaining about it at all, but it is weird to think this time a week from now, Virginia will have already played its first ACC game. Well, you can say thank you to COVID for that one. If I did, that would be the first time I would have thanked it for anything. <laughs> down low for Jefferson. Boy, I mean, her play has been exceptional. Again, to repeat myself, she has been so efficient, not just today, but this season. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, last season she was averaging just about five minutes per game. Scored a total of 17 points in all of last season and came out against ECU 
and just shine. I mean, she did everything that she that she is comfortable with doing around that block, whether it's turning around a face-up shot, whether it's putting it back up. I mean, I kind of talked about it in the last game that she's usually in the right places at the right time, but now it's so great to see her actually looking and creating shots for herself at the basket as a close player. And don't look now, but little 6-0 run for Virginia. Another bucket here, and we got a ball game. Miller draws back iron. Bristol, she'll go to the free throw line. Virginia chipping away, and I'll tell you what, got a chance to make this very interesting. Just to complete the thought on Jefferson, talk about the growth from first year to second year, which is so often talked about in collegiate sports as the biggest jump a player, regardless of sport, is yeah. going to make, is from their first year in a program to their second year, and to really see how much they can develop the transformation essentially from a high school athlete to a true collegiate athlete. But, man, Jefferson, she came to the game shooting 77% from the floor, which was tops in the ACC. And you say, okay, well, it's been two games, so how much stock can you put into that? Well, here she is again tonight, six of eight from the floor. So this is starting to become more of a trend than a fluke. only be about a half second difference between game clock and shot clock. Step back three from Hazel on the way. You want to talk about a silencer. That is exactly what JMU needed. Jefferson will deflect the pass, and that is how. Quarter number three will come to a close, and it's Jamia Hazel with her fourth three-pointer of the game. The freshman doing it all. Dukes lead by 11. Saturday, this is our college football triple header on East Direct quarterback De'Ara King and number 10 Miami squaring off against Duke in our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by GEICO. Back to the hardwood as we get this fourth quarter underway from JPJ and what felt like a little bit of momentum from Virginia towards the end of the third quarter. Silenced by that big three by Jamia Hazel. Meantime, Peyton McDaniel battling underneath and it's shades of the first quarter now for the Dukes who can't make a layup. And oh man, I tell you what, this is getting bizarre. That was a carbon copy of what we saw on a possession in the first quarter from JMU, getting five, maybe even six I looks from had, point blank range. I thought I had some deja vu for a second. Deja vu all over again. Got to ask Amadine Twa if we're saying that correctly. Yeah, right. JMU just not able to put the ball in the net here. Able to get some awesome free throws, though. Tell you what, actually, as I say that, we could also ask Anju at the free throw line for JMU. French, one of five languages that she speaks. Oh, to be so talented. Not a. Lawson the other way for Virginia now. Dukes have a 13-point lead again. Lawson wide open from three. Makes good on it. Virginia's got a little digging to do. That'll help. Good job for Virginia for really being patient. You know, there are a few times where Amadine Twa thought she had the open shot and got it right back to Caden for, for an even more open shot. Traveling violation. As Tucker started to go It's been a tough night for Rain Tucker. It has been so good in the early goings for JMU this season. A sophomore from New Carrollton, Maryland. turnovers from Lawson. There's been a whole lot of good. There's been some kind of understandable, not so good. Those freshman mistakes. Great feet underneath. Oder Kirk. And I don't know what it is. The closer to the basket, the more open they are, the more trouble they have finishing, it seems. I know, and on the three-point line, it's like they're hot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Bristol traveled. Well, I think she's actually probably fortunate because if that play continues after the traveling call, she's probably going to be whistled for an offensive foul. And I 
say both of these teams doing a really good job of putting their bodies on the line and, and being willing to take the charge. Both aggressive drivers for, for Virginia's guards and JMU's guards. That was a skill you developed over the course of your playing career from when you arrived to when you finished up in a Virginia uniform. You were one of the best at drawing charges. Is there a one coach you would, or maybe even a player that you would say deserves the most credit in honing that skill? Well, first I love that you said develop because my freshman year there was no way <laughs> I was going to be taking a charge. But really Coach, coach Kim McNeil, she was the one that told all of us really how to take a charge properly. And then it kind of just became my niche, especially in the ACC. I mean, there were so many post players that were taller than me, bigger than me, um, and they tried to use their body. And so, you know, I kind of used my advantage of being able to take such a great charge, I must say. <laughs> Saw Coach McNeil when Virginia hosted ECU and what ended up being what amounted to a last second shot victory, bank shot with six seconds left pushed East Carolina past UVA and Coach McNeil's return to John Paul Jones Arena. Another team sporting purple and a shade of gold. Also in front of Virginia here tonight in James Madison. We have a foul away from the ball here. Looks like they got Tucker. He will inbound for the baseline, and Anjouf will return now for JMU. <laughs> Miller just got it in in time. I've already seen one five-second violation called against Virginia. Lawson on the move. Some flying elbows around there in the paint. Maybe somebody didn't catch one. The Dukes in the front court. Jefferson gives for Tinsley. Wide open Jefferson for three. Another offensive rebound for Juke. Tinsley traveled with the basketball. Tried to get away with that Euro step. Big smile. Offensive rebound after offensive rebound, though. I mean, JMU, 17 offensive rebounds this game. A lot of them, I will say, have come from their own missed layups. However, they're getting on the boards, and if they're going to miss layups, Virginia has to take advantage and really put a body on someone so that they can take it down and, and stop them from even giving another, get another chance at the basket. 17 offensive rebounds, 13 second chance points for the Dukes. And I think, you know, more offensive rebounds than points, mainly because of how many missed layups they've had. Here's Carol Miller knocking down the tray for Virginia. Has it back down to a single digit lead. Nine the advantage for JMU. So we're under seven minutes remaining in regulation. Miller's having herself a great game. And, you know, I know Virginia does not want to take moral victories from another game, but Miller getting going is a good sign. Well, tonight at 10, the All-ACC team will have a full breakdown, plus highlights and scores and all the news from around the league. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. 10 p.m. Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. We have a timeout on the floor, and JMU with a nine-point lead. 6.45 remaining fourth quarter back to John Paul Jones Arena. Well, after tonight, two more non-conference tests for JMU before they will enter CAA play. And you can kind of catch it at the tail end there, Lauren, but what the CAA is doing this season is something truly unique. The back-to-back -back games along the weekend in one destination, be it hosting somebody for two days or going on the road to face somebody two days in a row, it is going to be a year unlike any other. I mean, it's to state the obvious, but in the CAA, even more so. For sure. I mean, we talked about, you know, the legs and the depth that JMU has, so this schedule may work out in their favor. I mean, they have very athletic 
scorers um, who are able to, you know, turn it on and off at any given night. So this might end up being a, a good thing for this team. However, I could not imagine playing back-to-back -back games week after week after week. And no midweek games. It is all weekend games once you get into the CAA schedule. And it'll be one weekend, you're at home for two straight games. The next week, you're on the road for two straight games. But those road games against the same opponent in the same building, which just so strange. I mean, it really limits travel, which makes all the sense in the world to try and do right now. Mm -hmm. And it spaces out the cross contact between programs in a big way. So there's a lot of logic behind it. Yeah, I mean, and when you think about coaches creating a game plan as well, I mean, maybe this takes or gives them a little bit of time back. <laughs> I mean, because they're essentially preparing, I would say, even as how college football and, and even NFL teams prepare as one weekend at yeah. a time. Tinsley on the move. A lot of contact, no call. Meantime, Jefferson open for three. There's Juve on the offensive glass again. And she earned those two points. She's been doing it all night long. Down low, cleaning up the glass. JMU, such a dangerous team as they're able to score from the outside and the inside. Claws three off the mark. Here's another look at Anju, Georgia Tech transfer. Done inside an ACC facility. Played 14 minutes against Virginia last year. That game was in Atlanta. Our first minutes in John Paul Jones Arena tonight. You know, Go back to the thought on JMU's schedule. Our stats guy, Scott Fitzgerald, points out that what they're doing is actually very common in Division III scheduling. It's how most Division III schedules are constructed playing back-to-back -back games against the same opponent. So it's not as if it's unprecedented. It's just, you know, the first time making its way to Division I play, at least in what I've ever seen. So... Again, I, I think it is a really smart idea. It's as much as you can do to mitigate the risks of travel and facing too many different opponents in a short span of time. Off balance, awkward shot from Tinsley. I think she was just trying to get a foul call. Meanwhile, Deja Bristol had been down on the other end of the floor waiting for a stoppage in play. And she is helped off by Virginia's trainer, Brittany Vaughn. Emily Maupin will... Return to the floor for Virginia. Looks like her arm might have gotten caught. She's holding that shoulder there. The last thing I'd want to do is be medical prognosticator, but could that have been it popped out of the out of place? Could have been in, in, in just as easily as that is capable of happening. It could have popped right back in. Yeah. Wide open, Muffin from the left side. That transfer has two more. Our first points of the night. She had a great game last time out for Virginia in her first appearance in the orange and blue. Near turnover kept alive by Juve. Hazel, the kick out. McDaniel, one freshman to another, but it won't go. Tucker skying in for the weak side rebound. I'll tell you what, there's going to be players in the box score that the numbers are going to jump off the page at you more than on Juve, but I, there's a very strong case to be made that she's been the MVP of this game for, sure. for the Dukes. I mean, she's been everywhere, defensively and offensively. She's definitely made a presence inside and just rebounding alone. I mean, she has 10 boards tonight, only nine points, but she's been everywhere. Yeah, they got to get her another bucket to get her a double-double. And how about six of those ten rebounds have been offensive rebounds? Very strong game. Although I say, you know, there's a, a good case to be made. I don't have to convince you. I know post players love highlighting other post players for yeah. a job well done. Yeah, so. for sure. And she just came up with that block. I'm not sure if you caught that one. Maybe a triple-double the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Tinsley thought about it. With seven to shoot. She will pop. Ooh, rims in and out, no good. 
That one was halfway down. Less than four minutes left in this game. The last four minutes of the game are going to be important for Virginia to take really good shots. I think that the depth that we're seeing from JMU is definitely playing into their favor, Kenny. A timeout taken, and you know Virginia has crept back within seven points. So to look for her as they did in this first quarter. Yeah, you mentioned Miller playing almost every minute. It was Miller and Twa, the Iron Women for Virginia last time out. This time, it's been Meg Jefferson who has played every minute tonight for the Hoos thus far. And don't see why Virginia would think about taking her out at this juncture the way she's been playing. But, you know, you talk about limited bodies somewhat for Virginia still due to some injuries. And so they got to go with what they have. And so far, those players have been playing mighty well, those sophomores for Virginia. As we go to the final 3-11 of regulation, and here is Twa. Miller dumping inside for Jefferson. A little turnaround with the left hand, and of course she makes it stick. Virginia within five. I love that they went to that option. They might have been thinking that Carol Miller would be coming off of the screen for a shot, but Meg Jefferson comes in strong on the post. Last year, Virginia able to hold off JMU 55-49. Higher scoring affair this year and an offensive foul going to give it back to the Hoos. So Virginia has a chance now to make it a one possession game with a bucket here. We saw against ECU able to execute late in the game. Let's see if they'll be able to do it again. Yeah, it took until the 16 second mark, but Virginia was finally able to tie up the game. And Miller trying to force a pass to mop and couldn't complete it. Now JMU wants to run. It's the freshman McDaniel. Kicks out to Tinsley, and she'll pull it back to set up the offense. Smart play there to pull it out, not force anything for JMU. Up five, want to get a good look at the basket here to try to extend this lead. Nice kick to a wide open Jefferson for three, and that is a huge one. Kiki Jefferson. Her first three on the night. Had a slow scoring night, Jefferson did, but able to hit the wide open shot. Extend this lead for her team. There's Twa from the left side. So Virginia not going away just yet. Who's back within six points as we hit 90 seconds left in regulation. Virginia coming out of that zone that they were previously in, matching up, giving JMU another look. Tinsley trying to do it against their former team, slings it over to Jefferson, charging the paint. Five to shoot. Tinsley for three. Left it short. Twa the rebound. In transition, Twa. Virginia cuts the lead to four as we go under a minute. And Twa, a little bit shaken up as she landed awkwardly. Does get back down the floor. Credit her for fighting through. And now, timeout taken by JMU. And I think mercifully for Amadine Twa there, who looked like maybe an ankle or something, just landed a little bit unusually. And Yeah, it looks like she's trying to stretch out that calf. Might have just landed or came down on Actually, looks like she came down on her own foot. <laughs> Hoping that she is able to come back to close out this game for her team. Kind of locked that calf up. Mm -hmm. Almost gave herself a Charlie horse. Possibly. I mean, you know, it's. You're right. It was definitely her own shoe on top of the other. But she has been great this last minute to pull Virginia back within four. I mean, look at the stat sheet for Virginia. Down by four right now with 49 seconds left, but they have four players in double-digit figures. Some, the first time that we've seen that this season, at least. And we've got Miller, Lawson, Jefferson, and Twa really stepping up. We, we knew what Jefferson was going to do coming off of that ECU game or was hoping that she'd do the same thing. And, and now she's got a supporting cast. You know, it's a great point about the balanced scoring attack for Virginia. And I think... Another important point, Lauren, is 14 assists on 27 made buckets. And, you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but 
I mean, I can tell you off the top of my head, I know for sure that's a much better ratio of assisted buckets than Virginia had last time out against East Carolina and in their opener against UCF. So there are a bunch of positive signs on the offensive end for just the way Virginia is playing and has played tonight offensively. I think the problem has been on the defensive end. Here is JMU's leader, Kiki Jefferson. Shot clock winding down, and with three to shoot, it's going to be tipped out of bounds, and JMU now is going to have to hurry. You know, that ball going out of bounds might have been the best thing for the Dukes because I don't know how they were going to be able to get a shot away. Yeah, they were going passing it away from the basket. Good defense there from Virginia. You know, after the ball went out of bounds, another second ticked off the shot clock, but I don't see anybody from JMU's side of things protesting. So this is going to be a really tough set for JMU to have to beat the shot clock. Earlier in the game, it, they weren't successful at it, but they did do a back screen for Rain Tucker to come around in the back side of that post. And so if they try to get a lob, then possibly because she does have the athletic, athleticism uh, to tap that back in. You know, the problem is if she's wide open and taking the layup, because that has been the bugaboo all night for JMU. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but in all seriousness, the, I mean, if JMU finds a way to score here, now they have put that second back on the shot clock, by the way. So, yep. I mean, the difference between one and two seconds, it might it might not seem like a big deal, but it is in this setting for a player to actually be able to set, compose themselves, and then shoot. Yeah. But the point remains, you know, if JMU scores here, that feels like the dagger in this game. Virginia has to be talking on defense, possibly even switching screens. Again, two on the shot clock as Oderkirk inbounds. They find Jefferson, puts it up, and puts it in. Kiki Jefferson taking charge when it matters most. Jefferson now with 13. With 13 seconds remaining. Miller gets the rebound, kicks out. Here's Twa for three. It's good. Abedin Twa makes it a one possession game. Can't count Virginia out when you have shooters who are not afraid to shoot the ball. Amadine Twa, very confident player. Ready, sitting there waiting for a kick out and knocks it down. Well, back to back impressive displays of offense. First, the inbound to Kiki Jefferson and Lauren. There's no other choice, but she finds a way. Going back to your leader, you talked about it. I mean, she hasn't had the, the best scoring night, but she she made herself available. And on the other end, Amadine Twa out there on the three point line with her hands in the pocket, ready to knock down the shot when it counts. Twa now the leading scorer for Virginia, 17 points. How about Virginia as a team? Lauren, 6 of 12 from beyond the arc. That is a much needed boost of confidence. Really, both of these teams, actually, for that matter, have struggled mightily from beyond the arc coming in. Virginia as a team, 2 of 18. JMU as a team, 2 of 19. Or beg your pardon, JMU as a team, 2 of 19 their last time out, 4 of 37 on the season. Yeah. These two teams, with JMU shooting a whole lot more of them than Virginia, had really struggled from three-point land coming into tonight. Yeah, and when you think about you know both of these teams, but specifically Virginia, a team who who will see the zone a lot on the on the offensive end. So if they can really stretch that and, and make some threes on the outside against these zones, that can really force teams to go man and play into to their game. With five seconds to go now and a near turnover collected by Jefferson. There's a whistle and a foul. And that should be the 15th foul on Virginia, and it is, which means free throws now for Kiki Jefferson. JMU, again, got it into the hands of the player they wanted. Now, almost gave it away right there in doing so. Jefferson, two of two tonight from the foul line. Missed on the first, a 77% shooter from the foul line a year ago. Five of six on the year coming into tonight. So pretty good shooter in her career. And she goes one of two, and that's a big one. Makes it a four-point game. Obviously, you would have liked both, but really the most important thing is yeah. two-possession game now. And 
Tina Thompson will take the timeout so as to advance the ball to the front court. Again, I think it's worth repeating, Lauren, that there were a couple of stretches in this game. It looked like JMU was going to pull away, but we've ended up having a pretty fun one here on a Thursday night. Yeah, it seems like every time every time we, we think that the game may be over, uh, Virginia has answered. Uh, they've had multiple players scoring double figures tonight, as I said a little bit earlier, and they have really just been able to turn it on. As soon as they see that they're lacking or they've gone scoreless for so odd many of minutes, they are able to get a basket. You know, this is going to be tough if indeed JMU does hold on for the victory tonight for Virginia because this will be back-to-back -back games in which they will have fought back to get so close but come up just short. Dangerous pass for Jefferson. You know, you don't necessarily fault Virginia for trying to force the issue. If you can get it into Jefferson and she gets an immediate bucket, yeah. that's exactly what Virginia would have needed there. Yeah. I think they tried to throw the lob to her, but I would have liked her on the ball side block right over her left shoulder as she's been doing all night. JMU gets it in, and Virginia will call off the dogs, and that will do it. So indeed, it is a hard-fought comeback for Virginia, but they will come up just short, and JMU will hold on when it's all said and done. Our final tonight, JMU 71, Virginia 67, as the Dukes get a much-needed bounce-back win. They did, and Kiki Jefferson, 14 points. She started off slow, but was able to be the leader that her team really needed down the stretch. Whenever they, they hit a low point, it was Kiki Jefferson to pull them out. Virginia, like you said, fought back, and they, like they did against ECU, but they were not able to do it. They did have four players in double figures.